yeah and and jumping on that onto that particular topic is uh, so so a little bit context for the people who are listening is uh, so you you recently wrote out a very anal- a very nice analysis article comparing the representational structures of vision transformers versus typical like the best uh, conversation neural network that we have is resnet models and i think uh, it, it was a very nice representational uh, comparison and uh so a uh, context a uh, slight more context uh, zooming out as vision transformers was something they published out of google research where they are taking a very transformer um, architecture based approach to solving imaging tasks that are typically normally always tackled using convolutions so you did a very head to head comparison that's the best manner we can use for the standard data sets imagenet so i'm i'm curious and this is something i have been using and trying to explore for even my projects that i'm trying to do for certain reasons like of course i'm not targeting accuracy in that particular reason mm-hmm. but i'm curious based on your analysis and i read the paper but something uh, i want to ask uh, on an overarching question is where do you think vits or the vision transformers have a clear advantage if at all they have uh-huh. to solving a particular task that convolutions might not have versus what are some of the tasks that you will say which are still inherent to cnns they cannot be solved using vision transformers and we could we shouldn't expect vision transformers to overrule um, cnns right um so i guess in answering this question maybe i'll also draw on some of you know the results we had in our paper um yeah. so you know broadly i'd say um probably cnns still have an advantage in places where you might not have um you know as much data or you might not be able to easily perform things like transfer learning i think i think if in situations where if you can expect transfer learning to work well you can actually expect a vision transformer to do a good job because um they've been like testing that with sort of taking it and then having a pre-trained model and then seeing how it works as you as you fine tune it on different data sets and things um but you know if there are settings where you know you think this kind of fine tuning from from well, like you know one of these standard pre-trained um setups is not going to work super well then definitely the CNN would have the advantage there um i think also you know the first results were uh really only on image classification and i think there's like you know follow up work going on extending that to to like other tasks like object detection um i i need to check but like you know i imagine some of these other tasks which have taken us a while to develop just in terms of like CNNs might take like a little bit longer to to develop in terms of like um vision transformers we might have to revisit a lot of that design and then think about how we're going to do it again and then similar for like you know aspects of things like image generation um i think if i were speaking more fundamentally i would say i do think cnns have a very um powerful and useful inductive bias of the convolution um and when when there's going to be limited data available i i just feel like i see that being very useful um on the other hand and this is just drawing on results of our paper um we find that because vision transformers don't have this inductive bias and like this this convolution and instead what they have this is global self attention layer um if you can train them properly sometimes that can lead them to um that that can lead them to getting very strong representations even earlier on in the network um so one thing we find um because this global self attention because it doesn't have um this nice inductive bias uh then when it like learns to do the right thing in some sense um it can incorporate you know some amount of like local information it can incorporate some amount of more global information um and what we find is that that leads to like um very strong representations um even pretty early on in the architecture um so you can do certain like linear probes like tests between the um the con- the convnet and the vision transformer um so you'll go ahead to some intermediate representation and then you'll see how well it can classify on some task just based off of that intermediate representation um and then in those kinds of evaluations um the vision transformer ends up doing actually uh, a lot better and um we think that's because it's it's managed to aggregate it's managed to you know really utilize self attention to to aggregate things in a in a more helpful way that prepare it to do things like that um So I think that um I guess that the vision transformer has access to to enough data to be able to really make best use of its um self attention mechanism then that can lead to some very strong representations that I think should actually give it a pretty strong advantage against um CNNs simply because they are they have this thing hard coded and there is like also a downside to having things hard coded um but on the other hand um there is this big thing of can you train the vision transformer to actually use its self attention um effectively in that way and if you can't do that then i feel like the the cnns are going to be um definitely better to go with because they've gotten the the inductive bias they have i mean it's hard coded but it's also been just enormously successful and so so that would be like a good direction to look into yeah